There are some investors out there, some of them who even watch this show, some of whom may even be in the chat right now, who have some serious concerns. Tesla isn't moving way too slow. Is it? Let's find out. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. As a reminder, this is the full version of the show on the second channel or the condensed version on the main channel. It's whichever one you see on the screen. You know how that goes. When will the Cybertruck be available? So this was a video I did where I addressed a lot of the questions from the Say Technologies, uh, Tesla Q2, earnings, potential shareholder questions. I went through them all. That's a great face I'm making there. And uh, someone sent me a very long message uh, on Patreon expressing concerns, frustrations, and venting. And it was good. And I uh, wanted to stew on it a little bit, but I got permission to address it here instead. I can't argue with any of what you said. To my knowledge, it's all factually accurate. Not that I would expect less from you. So yeah, let's stay with the facts. That's where, that's where we win. However, that doesn't paint the whole picture. I call BS on them not thinking the demand for the Y would be so high. It's the best-selling class of vehicle. So the question really is, the background here is, where's my Cybertruck Elon? Where's my semi? Where's my roadster? And I'd said, they're focusing on the why because it's easier and they can build it. <clears throat> and he said, BS. They knew it was going to be the best selling. They didn't, they didn't need to change course to do that. And I would argue they didn't fully appreciate just how big it was going to be. The crossover SUV is the most popular form factor. Why wouldn't it be their best selling car? Well, they're building it in four factories. I don't think they anticipated that. Uh, it's pretty rare for a car to be made in four factories. But they were caught off guard. Uh, even in, this one's just about the right-hand drive market. But the demand for it has been better than they expected. And they expected it to be good. It is possible. Um, right now, it is already the uh, best-selling SUV in China. And I saw one number that said it might be the best-selling car in China. Or at least it was in June outselling even that $5,000 Wuling death trap. That's, that's a lot of units. On Next Big Future, he's asking, is it already the best-selling car in the world? And he's got some numbers to back it up. It could already have outsold the RAV4 and the Corolla, which would be a big deal. The best-selling car in the world by 2022 but yeah, where's my Cybertruck? Why can't we? Well, great. Tons of demand for that. Give me my Cybertruck too. Even if they didn't think it would get to where it was so quick, they've had two years to accelerate production. Yes, and they have. That's why Texas is making them in such big numbers, or hoping to, uh, rather than starting with the Cybertruck like I thought they would. I mean, you've got a Model Y factory in Berlin, a Model Y factory in China, and a Model Y factory in Fremont. Do you really need a fourth one? Apparently the answer is, yeah, I do. But the 50% year-over-year growth is something he's been guiding for all along. If you remember this interview, the day the stock went public, he had a car out there on, and, uh, on Wall Street showing it off. And they said, how many units are you going to sell? And he's like, well, we'll be to 500,000 by uh, 2020. And they're like, <laughs> Okay, they've always guided for roughly 20%, uh, 50% year over year. So if they're already, they're, they're, they're still growing according to their plans. Granted, Earth 2020 happened, but still they've had plenty of time to dramatically increase production and find ways to ease the pressure. They seem to go slow in that regard. But 50% year over year is always the plan, and that's what they're doing. They're, they may not be doing it with the model mix, the product mix that we expected, but they are doing it. I think my speculation is that Elon believed they would need to have more models in order to have 50% so far. Yes, the Cybertruck will take more batteries, but the margins or supposed margins on that vehicle will be much greater than the Y. Yes, and that's the problem. It's the supposed margins. We don't get to see behind that curtain. We don't know what the actual margins would be. Now, they could sell them at any price. With the backlog such as it is, with the fan base such as it is, with 
even no excuses, but there are legitimate excuses. They could sell them at any price they want. Is Elon Musk back in production hell with the 4680 battery? Yes. Yes, that seems to be the case. They're hoping to get a thousand cars worth of 4680s out of Texas per week. Uh, get enough 4680s per uh, to make a thousand cars a week by the end of the year. That's not, that's, I'm going to tell you right now, that, that does not sound like the original plan. So it's a difficult thing, I guess, making batteries. Panasonic struggled to ramp in uh, Nevada, but they also weren't exactly planning on it. Elon said, I, I'm going to need this many batteries, and they said, uh-huh. And then he came in and said, okay, I'm here for my batteries, and they said, oh, wow, you were serious. Hmm. Combined, the Y and Cybertruck could have been the one-two punch to cripple Legacy Auto. Legacy Auto needs to be put down, but instead they aren't building the capacity for the demand. I just want to address the crippling Legacy Auto. That's not my goal. I don't want them to die. I want them to evolve. As great as Tesla is today, which is also debatable, I don't want them to have a monopoly. I don't want them to be the car company of the world. I want them to be one of the car companies of the world. I want competition, and I believe Elon does too. So a lot, if, if Legacy can survive, I think that's a good thing. What was the figure? 250,000 Cybertrucks out of Austin per year? Yes, but you have to know that that's not real. Because remember, Shanghai's output was stated at 450,000 combined, up until the most recent quarter. Now we know in December, they were already at a run rate of 900,000. And they only just now bumped it up to a more realistic figure. But Shanghai is still being uh, retooled. So if the backlog's a million before it even ships, no way in hell is someone waiting four plus years for a truck. They'll find another option. I agree. If what you need is a truck. Now let's remember that a lot of the reservations are from folks who put in three orders or 10, or 50, or 100. Yes, there are people who've put in 50 to 100 orders. Now, they're banking on robo-taxi, or maybe they're planning to flip a bunch of them, but they're, the one I saw, the interview I saw, the guy said, and this was on Brighter, the podcast with Tesla Herbert, the, 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 the gentleman said, I don't even know how I would finance tens of millions of dollars of cars, but I'll try and find a way. So I don't know if the production backlog is as long as we think, but it may be. But even still, the capacity is not going to be a quarter million because these things will be built quickly. So in Shanghai, yeah, they're going to be able to produce, we believe, 3,000 a day after the line upgrade. 3,000 a day. That's far, far higher uh, than what we believe <laughs> from looking at the, at the targets on the quarterly report. They should be building capacity for at least a million a year. And I really believe they are because it's such a simple design. It's elegant, it's uh, straightforward. There's not many pieces to it and it'll go together super, super quick. They may not use all of that capacity at first, but the backlog won't be as big or the wait times as long. Plus they could use the lines for other cyber vehicles, which we know are coming. Yes, but let's not announce any more vehicles until we get these ones handled. Our plate is so full of stuff and we're already going back for seconds. Let's, uh, let's work on what we got. Again, not moving or planning for fast enough growth. Now, I, I'm still disagreeing with this because 50% year over year is the target. And I would be, if I was Tesla, I'd be concerned that trying to grow exponentially at this stage could introduce big errors that don't need to be there. I haven't even touched on the semi with let's say 500,000 Ys coming out of Austin, a quarter million Cybertrucks, let's say an even million. Even with as huge as that is, I think that would take up all the floor space. What's the plan for the semi? Where are they building that at scale? So, so far they've been onesie twosieing them in Nevada, but they would need some space, but not a lot because Volvo, who produces tens of thousands, North American orders rose to 25,000 trucks. 
Their factory is 1.6 million square feet in Virginia. 1.6 million square feet, quite big. But you got to remember, Giga Nevada is, if you were to build it there, there's tons of space available. But even in uh, Giga, Giga, Texas, that building is about, what did I say, 8, 9 million square feet? There's, there could be room in there for this, especially early on, but there's plenty of land nearby on the property. I also call BS on being cell constrained. That's never been true. Every single company they get cells from also sells cells to other companies at volume. And that is a very good point. That is a very good point. Now, you can't just buy 2170s off the shelf, but companies will make whatever you buy. So you're right. If Ford and GM and Lucid and Rivian all have enough cells to get going, enough cells exist. So that's actually a very valid point. If they were serious, they could easily buy out the companies or their entire capacity for a set amount of time, but they didn't. They had that capability years ago and more so today. Yeah. Yeah. There's some logistical challenges there and I, and I can't address them directly. I don't know what they are. Yeah, Panasonic's building a new factory, again, in the middle of nowhere, Kansas. But what's exactly stopped them from expanding Nevada sooner or at all? It's easier to expand within the existing factory, especially when it's only about, what, a third complete? So Giga Nevada, as I understand, has run into staffing issues. The inability to attract, they've already tapped out the local market and convincing people to move to Sparks can be difficult because, yeah, it's not nearly as big as it was intended to be. A third is probably about correct, but they've introduced efficiencies that have allowed them to reach their production objectives without a larger building. And yeah, granted staffing may be an issue, but I imagine that being the case for Kansas too. And also, when is it actually coming online? And I believe the answer is mid-24 for the Panasonic line, but I'm not positive. Uh, Sparks, this is the most beautiful picture of Sparks I could find. It's lovely here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, lovely here. Mm, I've been there. Not so lovely. The weather's pretty miserable in the summer. Not so bad. Once you get, once you get past Labor Day, it gets a little bit more reasonable. You are in the high desert. But there are people who live in Kansas who would be able to, who would be willing to work in, in that part of the country who may not be willing to go to Nevada. I trust Panasonic knows what they're doing when it comes to building factories. Doubling the size of Berlin is a joke. Scratch that, Berlin itself is a joke, or maybe it's Germany. I gave up trying to figure out where the problem there is, and I'm gonna disagree. So, uh, Berlin and Texas broke ground only a few months apart. April, May, June, July, four months apart. So Berlin broke ground four months earlier, but they had a very prolonged pandemic shutdown and they were not able to build for quite a while. Really, their construction has been kind of neck and neck and nobody would argue that Texas is too slow or bureaucratic. Uh, they knew what the what they were getting into. They knew how to how many I's needed to be dotted and T's to cross and they did it. And so far Berlin is out producing Texas, which leads me to believe that's not the problem. And you know, the yeah, the factory is open. And famously, the Berlin airport took, what, 20 years to build? It did not take 20 years to build in Germany for Giga, Tex or for Giga Berlin. So Berlin's troubles, uh, troubled Brandenburg Airport, still in crisis a year after opening. Yeah, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Staffing shortages, pandemic challenges, all kinds of problems. But Tesla managed to navigate that. When it takes them literal months to pave a small parking area in Berlin, I don't want to know how long an actual expansion will take. Well, you know how long an expansion will take. You've seen them build the first part. Well, one of the things that made the construction a little slower was the use of concrete for the pillars and beams rather than steel. Concrete is very heavy and difficult to work with compared to steel. Uh, but there are advantages. And they do have the rail stub there, which they use for the main building 
not so much for the 4680 expansion in the southeast corner, but still, it worked. And yeah, it can take them months to pave a parking area, but if the schedule says, if they say it's going to take us months, and you say, great, I've planned accordingly. You know, as long as I know what I'm getting into, I can plan around it. The problem is when they say it'll take a week and then it takes six months, then you're just, everything starts coming unraveled because you try and time things to work together. Either way, it's too slow for what they need. Sure, proceed with expansion there, but at the same time, they should be actively building several other factories to serve the European and African markets. And I agree, it is. it feels like it is time to address to address the next gigafactory outside of an established market. I don't think we're going to hear just yet. I hope we hear by the end of the year. So in Africa, uh, Africa is a very small car market. If you look at the list of top markets, it doesn't even make the list. As a continent, it's, it's, they don't sell many cars. North Africa, a little better, but it's, not a big car market, but we do absolutely need to get more factories. They may not have other products ready to build now, but they can prep the new factories for current and future models and products. And I would uh, advise caution with this approach, because if they had done that <clears throat> in Shanghai, what we would have gotten was a bunch of extra factories that look like this. That's not what Tesla uses anymore. This was great. This Model 3 line has been great. But they've got problems now because they can't go vertical on that space. There are efficiencies they're unable to tap into. Um, and if they had just built a bunch of new factories or new phases that look like that, we, we'd have a bunch of inefficient factories. We need to get past inefficient factories. We've got enough of those. Honestly, I know it's not a smart move, but they should put more of their eggs in the Chinese basket. Maybe spread it out to other parts of China, though. If they four to five X the current factory there, and while logistics could cost more, I think exporting from there to Europe would have been a smarter move. We'll all see uh, speed and eagerness. Yeah, um, China's tricky. China can get political. China um, is an absolute powerhouse for manufacturing. We do know that they're planning an expansion in Shanghai that should double the output. That gets you halfway to this hope, but diversifying around the world to me at least, seems valuable. So I wanted to thank you for this wonderful, this wonderful email that raised a lot of good questions that I was able to think about for, what, <laughs> two weeks, week or two? It was, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. So why don't we, let's see if I got one more thing. Actually, apparently I'm really jaded and didn't even realize it, rant over, good night. Hey man, we all gotta do it sometimes. We all got to do it when it makes sense. So thanks, of course, to my patrons. We will momentarily here jump into the Q&A hole where all the Qs get aid. <laughs> well, there it is, and there you go. If you want to see the full, uncut, 30-ish minute version of this episode, head over to the second channel, link in the description, and subscribe over there if you want to catch these live each Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific as well as the Fast Charging with b, &B podcast, co-hosted with Bear from Bear's Workshop. So, what did I miss or misunderstand? Tell me in the comments, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the other side. I had a little visitor. Sorry.